Hey guys, let's see, bringing you another video. Now, welcome to a patch note video, and apologies, it is a day late. I always usually get the patch notes the day before the patch, but unfortunately, I didn't really realize there was a patch, and it's completely my fault, because I was away on a trip last week, and obviously normally I kind of like, oh, every two weeks there'll be a patch, but because of the trip last week in the middle of the week, it kind of threw me off a little bit, so I just kind of forgot. Uh, but I'm still doing it, because a lot of people have said, dude, there's a lot of stuff that you might like or find interesting in this patch, as you know as i've always said uh, these patch videos also help me read the patch because without it i might not um so hopefully you guys still enjoy it if you do please do throw a like on the video also apologies about the wet hair i just got back from the gym had a shower and now i'm just recording this before i kind of go in a bit of chill mode uh did really good in the gym today so that's always a good thing so let's see what's in store so in this round of patch notes, you may notice some of the changes. Explicitly mention pro play. This is because MSI is right around the corner and is set to be played on the next patch, 12.8. We're aiming to shake things up in the meta uh, a bit to allow some more diverse picks in 12.7, 12 12.8. 12 uh, that basically means they want more crazy picks, you know, to translate that for you. Pro play, people watch when there's all crazy stuff going on. That's why you may notice Yasuo and Yone are getting buffed this patch. Like, it's legit. You know, they could, they could basically just say that out loud and most people would be kind of like, oh, okay. You know, that's what it's for. Um, but yeah, let's see what this one's all about. They're buffing some underpowered champs like Panther and Wukong, dropping some nerfs and stronger items like Gale Force and Winter's Approach and releasing some out-of-this-world Arcana skins. Okay, so the overview. We have nerfs to Jace, Lee Sin, Rise, and Zeri. I still don't think they're going to get Zeri right. Again, that's what I've said to you guys for many now years. If Riot fundamentally releases a broken kit champion, it's always going to be a nightmare to balance. And that is a lot of the modern champions have nightmare kits. Um, and I would say they are designed to do that on purpose. It is something that I've mentioned of... It used to be the old philosophy of certainly T that he literally doesn't give a damn about people that play against his champions. He only designs a champion for the person that plays it. It is really fun for the person that plays it. It is horrible for everybody else. Unfortunately, that does seem to be the concept that Riot has taken on as a whole. So all new champions are basically like that. And, you know, something like Renata that seems to be weak on initial impression has now turned into a bit of a monster. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of time for people to work out the new champions. But anyway, so there's that. Uh, buffs, though, uh, to Gangplank, Gwen, Callista, Karthus, Lilia, Nico, which I'm also playing, and I actually think Nico's not bad at the moment. Uh, Pantheon, Wukong, Yasuo, and Yone. So yes, the Wind Brothers. We're getting adjustments to Rengar. We're getting the new Arcana skins, and then we're getting system changes of uh, Abyssal Mask, Winter's Approach, Gale Force, Moonstone Renewer, Umbral Glaive, and Time Warp Tonic. Also worth knowing that these skins will be available on April the 14th. Okay, my boy Gangplank. Some people, by the way, did notice um, Gangplank and Yasuo are getting new skins, and both of them are getting buffed. Conspiracy. Um, but I will say, I, I've really been needing to get into playing more Gangplank this season. I just haven't fully pulled the trigger. Uh, but, you know, the new skin, I will say, you know, I was, I was live when they announced all those skins on stream yesterday. And a skin is the type of thing that will make people kind of pick up a champion. That's just the nature of skins. And that type of skin that looks absolutely insanely good, it might bring me back to playing a bit of Gangplank. So that's a good thing. Uh, passive burn, base damage increased late, and W mana cost decreased. Ooh. Ooh, interesting. So Gangplank is arguably struggling at all levels of play. He's already got enough gun powder in his Q and barrels. So we're putting some power into less explosive and more orange parts of his kit. So his passive is getting that's a lot of extra damage. Whoa. Burn base damage. It's st still at 55, but at level 18, it's going up to 310 from 225. That's not bad. Damn, okay, that's nice. And then the W, which I will say is incredibly expensive, especially in lane phase, uh, when Gangplank doesn't have a very big mana pool to begin with, uh, starts at 80 mana going up to 120. It's basically a 20 mana buff. So it's 60 to 100. That That is good. Um, that does help Gangplank quite a bit. And I will say, Gangplank, again, like they say, damage? Gangplank's damage is fine. He has got several builds. There are some different voices of who thinks what's better. Uh, I personally don't like Prowlers on him. I much prefer Immortal Shield Bow um, and going into the more crit-orientated full build. Um, but, you know, whatever build you're doing, hell, if you even do the Triforce build, they all do a lot of damage. So that's a good thing. He just needs the, the bit more utility. 
to bring him into the, the forefront. And, you know, in pro play especially, uh, he is quite a flashy champion. He can do crazy barrel combos. That's cool to watch, cool for casters to shout about. So maybe that's why they're obviously bringing Gangplank a bit more. Uh, Gwen, again, another modern champion that's quite flashy to watch. So I would say, again, another pro MSI reason why she's getting a buff because she's got a pretty scary kit and um, Gwen has taken over the game here or there and she's a relatively recent champion. So they got to be careful with some of these buffs. Uh, Gwen, E cooldown refund increased and R cooldown decreased early. So the E, the cooldown refund upon a first basic attack was 50%. It's now 60%. So you get the E up quicker, which is always nice after attacking the, the first time with it up. Then your ultimate is also getting a... 20 second early game buff wow that's pretty big 20 second early game buff 10 second mid game level 11 and then it's the same at rank 3 that's good for early game quinn it's going to make her you know 120 seconds for a dueling ultimate is quite long having it 100 seconds if i'm not mistaken is going to put her in the same lines as a camille uh fiora the duelist 1v1 champions i i most than i'd imagine have about 100 seconds on their rank one ulti not 120 so that does help and bring camille kind of kind of in the same range as the other duelist top laners so there's that my boy jace again not played much of him um this season people have noticed that um part of it is the philosophy that as you know you guys know i don't love playing early game champions and some people may say but jace can scale he can but he you know he doesn't have late late game scaling and you can fall off in comparison if there's a camille against you you're going to fall off and there is such a, a thing as jace of there's a bunch of top lane matchups that you will eventually not be able to do anything to that champion fiora camille quite popular champions and i don't love that feeling so although in season nine i used him quite well to get to master that's where my own opinion can change. You know, the game has changed too. So I do miss playing him. Um, but they're saying here that they were lowering, they're lowering his laning power, which is kind of the whole part of Jace that's strong, um, but increasing his growth to make sure he still scales into late game. So that's the point. If they're actually giving him more scaling, but reducing his lane presence, maybe that's fine because it's making him less dominant in lane, which is what he's supposed to do. But if they give him more scaling, then maybe I should play him, but we'll see what they're doing. So health growth, he's getting more health growth um but his base health is down so at level one he used to have 560 health he now has only 520 starting health ouch um so it will take quite a few levels for the health growth to overtake the nerf because the nerf's 40 40 health nerf at level one but he does get on the growth in late game it used to be 2090 he's now getting 2135 so it's a slight technical buff in late game armor once again you're getting five armor less in the early game and that literally could be a disaster for jace in certain matchups camille fiora etc uh, but you're getting more uh armor growth and because of the change etc at level 18 it is unchanged so this is a nerf for jace's armor all the way until level 18. At level 17, technically, you'll still have that nerf. At level 18 is when it will even out. Yeah, so I don't really agree that, you know, oh, he still scales the late game. Well, not really. Um, you know, giving him 50, if that, extra health and the same armor isn't really helping that. But I do know he's really strong in lane phase. He always has been. Uh, that's kind of what he's supposed to be. But that's not giving me the confidence of, oh, I'm going to play Jace again. But yeah. Callista... Uh, one of the champions you've got to be incredibly careful of buffing. Several years ago, Riot actually legit admitted there was three champions that they kind of gave up on in terms of balance. Azir, Callista, and Ryze. Uh, they're just nightmares to balance because the average player sucks on all three of those champions. Like, le legit, the average player cannot play Callista. They cannot play Azir. They cannot play Ryze effectively. A lot of the time, if people love that overall win rate stat, these champions very often sit in the low 40% win rates. But then if they have any decent strength, they can be the strongest champions in the game. Again, it's been historically shown, you know, Azir got nerfed with a 44% win rate in Platinum above. Uh, he still, I think, technically had a negative win rate in Challenger. The problem is, is some of these champions, they are so separated of skill, of pro play. If pros have a champion that is half decent, but there's a mechanical champ like an Azir or a Callista, they will abuse that heavily. And it could be average in strength, but because of the mechanics involved with Callista, they can push it over the kind of strength barrier. 
So you've got to be careful with these champions. So her base mana is going up by 50. Her movement speed is going up by 5. And her attack speed growth is going up by 0.5. They're all pretty big buffs. Wow. Damn. Okay, I probably would say, depending on comp, etc., you might see Kalista in MSI. And obviously, that's what they're trying to do. So she's not been often in pro this season, generally weak in all levels of play. So we're buffing her to see, you know, will people play at her and it, it, it could be um, in pro play especially so that's why they're doing it so we'll see definitely uh karthus q damage against monsters increased so karthus i mean he's kind of moved away from mid he is more of a jungler nowadays but even in modern day meta he has struggled because you know you have the likes of a kazix or a lee sin that's quite popular in modern day league invading an early karthus he's probably dead um so all they're doing is they're giving his jungle clear more clear so his q his spammable ability has an 85 percent damage scaling uh, against monsters it's going now to 95 percent. so a 10 percent damage buff to just jungle clearing that's not bad but it, he still has that inherent weakness of i could get invaded the thing is though if you play Carthus jungle and the enemy jungler isn't switched on to stopping you power farm in the jungle Karthus can still be an absolute monster he still is a late game hyper carry he's still ulting five people for free he still has great item synergy in modern day league of legends so he is still very scary so you might see a bit more Karthus now um and if you are against a Karthus and you're a jungler please do try to punish him early because that's where you need to punish him early uh Lee Sin um so again a lot of Lee Sin in in modern play um weird thing I will say is if they are yeah, reducing his impact in pro play. I actually find it a bit weird that they're nerfing Lee Sin before MSI. Why? Because even if Lee Sin has near 100% pick ban in MSI, he's an exciting champion. You know, insect kicks, ward jumps, hitting a Q maximum range and managing to land it is pretty exciting for people to watch. So for me, it's actually a bit weird that they're nerfing him. Maybe they should have nerfed him after if he's a bit too strong, but... You know, he is, it is what it is. So they're nerfing his base AD, which is bad because he's an early game jungler. Um, and, you, you know, his early game is now being affected, not by much, but a little bit. And then his Q is also being nerfed in the early game by five damage base. Um, the minimum damage is also being nerfed. Uh, and the maximum, because it is an execute, is also being nerfed by, not by much, 10 base damage. But again, when he is an early game jungler, nerfing his base AD and nerfing his base damage of his Q is going to hurt him. You know, that's the thing. Even a little, little nerf like this, it does make a difference when he needs to get ahead in the early game in comparison to a Kha'Zix or something like that. You know, he that he has to. Um, so that is going to hurt Elisin for sure. Uh, Lilia, one of what I would call the challenger junglers. Uh, very effective in challenger, but not that good everywhere else. Uh, passive healing against the champions increased and W base damage increased. So they, they're giving her pretty good buffs that is going to make her be able to jungle a bit better. She does have partially the same issue as Karthus, um, that she can get invaded by other junglers. And let's be honest, at the moment, the problem that jungle has is there's no reason, if you're wanting to play an AP jungler, there's only really one jungler that really is like, that's the one you should play if you can, Diana. There is no reason to play any other AP jungler if Diana's available. She is the best by far of AP. Echo might come a bit close, but she's even ahead of Echo. Like, Diana is mentally strong. And I don't think they're doing anything to Diana. I don't remember her being in the nerf list, because again, she's probably quite exciting for MSI. Uh, Nico. So I've been playing a bit of Nico. So Nico's been hidden from pro play despite being a strong tomato in solo queue. So that's the thing. I feel like she's actually quite good. So I already play Nico. So the fact that she's getting a buff here is only a good thing for me because I already am playing the champion. Uh, her on hit build was quite popular in past metas. So we're bringing it back. Oh, no, no, no. So they're actually not buffing technically my Nico playstyle, the mid lane AP. The on hit playstyle's top lane. It's kind of like a top lane cheese. You're building on the hit items, you know, it's AD Nico. Um AD well hybrid. You can buy Nash's Tooth, you can buy Wit's End, you can buy Blade of the Ruin King, Kraken Slayer. It's an it's an auto attack centric build. Um so that's what they're actually buffing. So the passive bonus magic damage from her W, that was the empowered auto, I believe, is getting a buff starting at rank two onward. Um, but just base damage, and then eventually a 40 damage buff at max rank. That's pretty big. Um at level five. 
And then the movement speed is also going up considerably, a 10% bonus movement speed at max rank, which again is very effective for Honor Hit Nico because her weakness is being all the all in um, because she's got a, like a squishy auto attack build. So more movement speed means she's a slippery champion, you know, harder to kind of lock down. So we might see on hit Nico, which is not the way that I like playing Nico, but yeah, uh, very annoying for bruiser champions in top. Um, Pantheon. Again, Pantheon falls in the category, unfortunately for me, that is, to me, and I know this sounds really harsh, there are a few champions that I borderline would say you're trolling if you're picking in modern day league. Pantheon is one of them. Uh, Lucian is one of them. Renekton's one of them. The game has moved past the champions that have to win early, otherwise you kind of are useless. Because the smarter the player against you, the worse Pantheon is. Like, if he plays Pantheon mid, and I've I've been against some Pantheons mid, and I'm just like, I'm just not going to get, you know, don't risk anything. I'm going to get slightly behind in farm. I'm not going to give you any kills in the early game. Pantheon panics. Like, they, they always panic because they're used to, that's their play style of, I, I'm 2-0, and oh, you know, getting level 6 on their alt bot lane. But if I play against a Pantheon, I'm just like, I'm going to play passive. You're now 0, 0, 0 at level 6, and you don't have that power spike to ult bot lane to get that double kill. That's the problem. So they're giving him... Um, b -b 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 base health regeneration is going down. The Comet Spear is... Q length is going up. The Q width is narrower. So it's longer, but narrower. Uh, they've removed... Um, Pantheon is longer, longer slowed if moving backwards with his E, so he has not slowed when he's got his damage immunity on. And they've updated, um, Pantheon now crashes down to his destination at 0 0.25 seconds sooner. That does help, because that's better for his ganks, but that's doing nothing to bring him into modern day League of Legends. So, to me, this is much of a muchness, still going to be kind of useless. Uh, Rengar, Q, no, Q bonus damage against structures reduced, and W bonus damage against monsters increased. Um, so Rengar, they obviously did some changes to him here or there. Um, I do have a Rengar top spectate coming out pretty soon uh, because I do want to give it a proper go in in, in soon history. Um, but um, yeah, so he's doing 40% structure damage less with his Q because it was doing a little bit too much, uh, taking towers too quickly. Um, but his W is getting more AoE clear, which is not, not a bad thing. So there's that. Rise again, we said earlier, one of the trifecta, you know, the triforce of champions that were too strong or too hard to change or fix for pro play. It was Callista, Rise, and Azir. And in this patch, we're literally seeing two of them get buffs, I believe. Uh, or maybe nerfs. Is Rise getting nerfed? Uh, Q damage AP ratio increased, bonus mana ratio decreased. Oh, okay, so it's just a little bit of a shift. So the base damage of Izzy is exactly the same. It was doing 45% bonus AP damage, now doing 50%, but it was doing 3% bonus of mana. It's now only 2. I think that's to... Um, yeah, it's to get rid of the tank build that Ryze was doing, the, f win the, the Winter's Approach Fumble Winter build, um, Frozen Heart also. It's to kind of get him away from doing that because he was still doing crazy damage but building tank. Um, and basically forcing them to be like no you're a mage build mage items not a you know mana tank items so there's that okay uh wukong uh q cooldown decreased w cooldown decreased late dash can now go through terrain Ooh, that's a pretty big change ep ap ratio and damage against monsters increased oh, okay these are jungle wukong buffs literally so the cooldown of your q is going down one second never a bad thing w is going down uh you know, starting at rank two, but big, big buff at rank five because it's a four second buff. And you can now go through terrain. Uh, so I imagine he can't go through really thick walls, but the more thin walls around the rift, he can now jump over with W. That is a huge change for Wukong. Like that is big, especially that they are trying to make him a jungler, what looks to be, because the uh, E, which is like his slightly AOE thing without his ultimate, um, is now doing... More damage, has better AP ratio, which obviously you don't build OP, but still. But it's doing 30% bonus magic damage against monsters. It was doing 50 before. So this is all for jungling. More uh, Q up better. Uh, your W can go through walls. That's huge for jungling, obviously. And your E is better for clearing the jungle. So might see Wukong jungle pretty soon, which is interesting. But, you know, claim his place back in top lane, but also reinvigorating jungle. So this is obviously a buff for top lane Wukong, his standard role right now, but 
this is a bigger buff for jungle so you know whether you play him top or jungle this is a good thing <sighs> yasuo <laughs> um despite my match history yasuo and yone have been relatively weak <sighs> and the sustain nerfs in 12.6 didn't do them any favors either rather than increasing their damage which yeah they don't need damage increases we're giving the wind brothers more opportunity to flex their skills even though there's basically no skill to playing Yone. Yes, what I'll say is slightly different. He is harder to play than Yone, clearly. Um, but we're increasing the early combat durability and ability to synergize the champions during the lane phase. So he's getting 30 more base health. That's okay. And then the ultimate is a bit of a buff. So not the worst buff in the world. That's manageable. So he can just ult a little bit more in the early game. And he's a bit tankier in lane phase. That's fine. Again, what people don't get, and I don't even think Riot gets fully, it isn't the fact that we think like, well, <sighs> Yasuo, I would say, is basically okay. Yes, he's annoying to play against, but that's kind of his his design. He Riot would probably admit he's annoying to play against. Windwall, etc. He can dash around, all of that. The problem more is Yone. He is unhealthy to play against. Doesn't matter what his win rate is. Whenever there's certain champions in games, there's a few, obviously, in League, and everybody also is different, but there are a few champions that come up quite often in people's lists yone being one of them yone fundamentally changes the game of league it's the same as a trend of it it's the same as some champions that you know you might not think he's a great champion but he changes the game just because he's in it of trend will change a game because he doesn't care for grouping he will just split push and you could be winning a game big team fight let's go we killed four people oh trend is on our inhibitor he's just ignoring the kind of team aspect of league Yone's kind of similar because he can do so much more than an average champion. There is not many champions in League that can do as much as Yone in one champion's package. Like, he can do, basically, Yasuo, Echo, and Zed combined in one champion. That's the point. He has the knock-up and tornado stuff that Yasuo has. He's got an Echo ultimate in his E, so he can engage from afar and bounce back to safety. And that same E includes a Z ultimate the pop damage he has three champions built into one and he's obviously a crit champion and even his build has got heavy sustain in it yes they were sustained nerfs but let's be honest they are still sustaining very very easily so he's just annoying to play against that's the problem and my also bigger problem is if I play against a Yasuo if I get outplayed sometimes you will kind of go oh yeah okay fair that dude played that well I will stand my ground and say I have never, ever felt outskilled by a Yone. It's no, never been the player that's like, dude, that player played that really well. Every single time it's like, well, Yone killed me. Like, it's the champion. It's never the player, it's the champion. And there's only a few champions in League that are like that. A lot of them are the more modern champions, it is worth saying. Um, but yeah, when the champion kit is ridiculous, it's more the champion doing all the work rather than the player. I prefer when it's the player using the kit rather than the kit kind of dragging the player. But anyway, they're giving him, again, it's not a big buff. It's just a buff to the ultimate that he'll be able to ultimate more. 60 second cooldown, I will say, is ridiculously low for late game. So every single little fight in late game, Yoni will have ultimate. Every single one. So that is scary. Um... I am banning Yone, by the way, now as my permanent ban. I just don't enjoy when he's in a game of League, clearly. Um, and so much so that I'm banning Yone over Katarina, you know, that's the thing. Um, I would also say, you know, maybe statistically it's not true, but I do find people in the rating that I am right now, Diamond 1, EU West, I do find that there's not as many Katarina, there's not as many Cat players than Yone players. Yone seems to be more popular. So that is part of why I'm banning him too. Zeri, the champion they'll probably never get right um they need to change her kit you know and this is the thing look at all these updates these are updates to her kit because she is still fundamentally doing a bruiser build but doing crazy damage aoe all of this stuff so that's what they want to try and move her away from they're just having a hard time doing it so base stats ad growth is going down so that means her uh, attack damage uh which is quite low but she starts with 50 and only gets 75 at base, where it was 87 before. So that's a considerable nerf. Base armor is now lower. Health growth has gone up. So she gets, instead of 2,030 base health, she's doing 2,115, but less armor. Q, uh, total physical damage has gone down, but gets better scaling as the game goes on. Uh, updated is Q burst fire. Now only applies on a hit effect once per cast. So that is really going to heavily nerf 
some of the on hit builds and the on the items that she was building because it was like going nuts with all like the, the the multiple bullets that was happening so that's going to really hurt that more build and then also zeri can now only gain one stack of r lightning crash and one instance of e spark surge cooldown reduction per q burst fire so again where zeri before with all these on hit items were getting all of her kind of procs and everything so quickly because she was procking it multiple times per q cast only happens once per cast that is quite big nerfs to that build and then the new thing is and this is where they're trying to let's say strong arm the community be going build her as an ad carry crit ad carry here double the shock critical strikes on q burst fire grant zeri an additional r lightning crash stack and an additional instance of e so what they're literally doing is instead of making you get multiple stacks from all the on hit items using q they are now moving the same kind of effect to oh if you crit with the q then you get all this stuff again that's how riot basically strong arm the community to kind of go you now build as an AD carry crit. You buy a Kraken Slayer, you buy an Infinity Edge, you build as an AD carry. You know, Essence Reaver, etc. Um, w, Ultra Shock Laser, is getting a base damage nerf in the early game. Actually, total. But better AD scaling and even slightly better AP scaling. So it might scale better into the late game with an AD carry build. So that's the point. An AD carry build, not a bruiser build. And then E, the cooldown of it is being nerfed quite heavily. Uh, it started at 23 seconds. It's now 28 seconds. So that's going to feel really rough in lane phase. But eventually you do get a second better in rank 5. And then the ultimate, again, huge nerf. 20 second nerf for rank 1. But eventually in late game you do get a 10 second buff. So they're making her lane phase a lot worse. Um, and they are strong arming, strong arming the community to build as an AD carry. I'm fine with this because guess what? She's an AD carry. So the fact that she had a bruiser build that did insane AOE damage, it always was a bit weird. Um, yeah, they're, they're getting rid of that. So I'm fine with this. I will say, though, people that have become, let's say, reliant on Zeri since her launch and have built that way they may struggle big time now if they've you know the one trick players out there who have one trick zeri with the bruiser build that's been ridiculously strong the bruiser build won't be a thing anymore you actually have to play like an, an actual ad carry which is a lot squishier so if you get caught out you're also more vulnerable um so yeah this is gonna be interesting uh very interesting so there's that uh item change abyssal mask so um unmake magic register reduction um so hang on so abyssal mask has taken a back seat to force of nature in terms of magic resist options this season we're buffing abyssal masks passive unmake to make it stand out as an aggressive tank option which will help unmake your enemies on mr so again if you're a tank and your your team is predominantly ap damage magic damage which is i will say somewhat rare this is the item that you should be buying because you're actually getting rid of your opponent's magic damage for your team so you are unmaking their magic stuff so uh five magic but you okay so you're basically taking away five of their magic resist plus one percent uh bonus health each time capped at 20 is now going up to five but 1.2 bonus health so it's now capped at 25 so you are taking away maximum if i believe i'm correct you are taking away 25 magic res magic resist from the enemies uh with this item which is good gale force obnoxious stupid item again people know i'm not a big fan of champion level mechanics and items which is fundamentally why i don't like a lot of the new items because some people may even compare to this going huz you're a nivea build you literally buy proto belt or rocket belt whatever the hell on a nivea now isn't that kind of the same thing yep do i like it nope it's funny like that's the thing it's funny and it catches people off guard that's why it works do i wish it wasn't in league yes i i don't like that these items are giving dashes because what i can't you know i spoke when um when these new items are about i was invited to a dev meeting and i had the exact same kind of question i was like do they feel it's it's a problem that they're introducing champion level mechanics to items and they were like nope it's fine I still think it's a big problem. Like, I think one of the biggest or two biggest people with Gale Force that obviously are problems, uh, Jinx, and they're saying Aphelios here, but Jinx and Jin, both are insanely immobile AD carries. They have no dashes. I obviously play a lot of Anivia or I play Ari and I 
dude, I'm, I'm hitting that Q. You know, I know their AD carry doesn't have flash. I'm hitting that Q on a Nivea or hitting that charm on Ari. No, I'm not because Gale Force exists. It's just a bit yeah, because that's the point. The design of Jinx when she was made, the design of Aphelios or uh, Jin, when those champions were made, they were given more damage fundamentally than, say, like an Ezreal because they're immobile. Ezreal has less actual damage than a Jinx or a Felios or a Jin, but the trade-off is he's so mobile. But that's the point, is this item has given those champions mobility. That's been my problem with it the whole time. But they are nerfing it, so in, well, in all time, it was a 90-second cooldown. It's now 110 seconds, so it will save an AD carry a little less often. That's the point. So I still think it's a problem. I still don't like it, but it's it's now less forgiving, which is a good thing. It's the step in the right direction, but, you know, do I wish the item didn't exist? Yes, but there's that. Moonstone, they're nerfing it uh, because basically every support, enchanter support, that's all you bought was Moonstone. So bonus heal and shield power per stack was 7%. It's now 5%, so it's a 5% max stack nerf. Umbral Glaive. A lot of people actually think this item is quite strong um, and they're buffing it. So look out for this item as a really fast, quick power spike if you're a lethality champion. Pike, I'm talking about you mainly. So the total cost has gone down by 100 gold. Uh, the combined cost obviously was reflected that also. And the cooldown of it has gone down by 10 seconds. So overall, really nice. Again, if you don't know what this item is, this is the item that spots wards for you and you can kill a ward, I think, in one hit. So a roaming assassin with an early power spike like this, really good. Hell, even like Zed might even buy this. If you play a roaming Zed playstyle, this is a really good first item. So yeah, why not? Uh, Winter's Approach. So, you know, a lot of mages and stuff would be buying this item. Viger's buying it. Ryzer's buying it, which is not exactly what they want to happen. So they're making it more expensive. They're giving it less health. And they're also fixing a bug that the base shield did not properly update with champion level. So they're just making it more expensive. So it's less nice for a mage to buy it second item. Um, you know, that's the thing. Because like literally on Viger or Rise, you are buying Winter's Approach as second item. And then you're ridiculously tanky, but you'd still do a lot of damage. So they're trying to stop that. Uh, hell, even a first purchase apparently too. Um, Time Water Tonic, they are nerfing. So it's just too reliable. Um, that's the rune, obviously, not the actual item, not, not corrupting potion. It's the rune that makes this a bit stronger. So immediate health and mana restoration used to get 50% of the, the, the potion straight away. It's now only 30% of it straight away. And the bonus movement speed that you get also has gone down by 1%. So you're less quick when you activate it too. So just making it a little less apparent. ARAM changes we don't really care about too much. Mythic content overhaul. Again, I have heard about this, by the way. They, they do seem to be nerfing loot quite heavily. Um, but the one good thing, I guess, is they're being open about it. So it does look kind of scumbag that they're doing it, but at least they're telling us. Because um, apparently, I believe, yeah, box in a box is gone. So masterwork chests no longer have a 10% chance to drop another masterwork chest in key. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, they've, they've gotten rid of that. That kind of sucks. You also, by the way, you could used to get 10 Mythic Essence. It's now gone down to 5, but Hextech Chest still dropped 10. So, I don't know. It just seems to be a little bit nerfs here or there um, to the system, um, is what I would say, um, which I'm not a massive fan of, but it is what it is. Um, the Ranked Season Split 2 is starting. I, I still will say and hold my ground that when Riot said, oh, we're doing splits... I was actually pretty excited for the idea of like, oh, they're going to kind of differentiate the different splits of the season. Honestly, it's kind of useless because the splits kind of feel pointless. Um, like, I, I don't know. I don't know what I was expecting. I don't know if I was expecting maybe, you know, a mini reset per split or I don't know. You know, maybe you get a ranked summary per split or something to make it more apparent a split has happened. But if you're not paying attention, you literally wouldn't know that a new rank split has ended or a rank split has ended a new one starting you know you just nothing's happened it doesn't matter so i don't know um but obviously we're getting a renata summoner icon we're getting a renata emote i think and also that reflects the um the ratings so um there's that we're getting clash mode bug fixes as i always say if you see a champion that you play make sure you read through it and we're getting the brand new arcana skins which which i will say do look really good 
um so that's cool but there we go a uh, bunch of chromas also but there we go so hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, sorry again that it was a day late I'm, I'm okay with this patch like again diana is missing like i mentioned from the nerfs but maybe they want her in msi it does kind of make sense um but honestly i will say weirdly this might sound weird yes i do think there are a bunch of new champions that still feel unhealthy to play against overall though i actually think the game is in a relatively healthy state i still think the damage is too high you know i think i'll always think that until they change it but it is a bit less apparent that sustain is ridiculously strong so they, they did nerf sustain a bit which is good um but yeah the damage is high but even with damage high the game is feeling healthy compared to what it has been in the recent past so it's not bad uh, but anyway, that's going to be it. If you guys did enjoy, please do throw a like on the video, uh, throw a comment, throw a subscribe. And what I would say, if you've made it all the way to the end of the video, uh, I still have some of the Silas skins to give away, the new Silas skins. So if you made it to the end, be a subscriber, like the video and comment down below. What do you think of the patch? Uh, do you think anything's missing? Do you think something's good? Let me know. Just make sure you include your summoner name and your region to enter for the Silas bundle, uh, league partner bundle. But that's going to be it. Thank you very much, everybody. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Call down the reckoning to bring back hope and peace, restore our glory to live forever. Bring down the dark regime, I know how to unleash eternal peace.